Memorial Day weekend is coming up, and Hollywood hopes that for many of you, it will be your first time back in the theater. They've got two movies to entice you with. However, while you can watch Cruella at home, you will only be able to see A Quiet Place 2 in theaters. And it was it was my first time back with this movie for seeing a film with an audience. I, in fact, did rent a theater last week. I'll tell you all about that in a moment. But I think it's fitting that I returned to the movie-going experience with A Quiet Place 2 because that was supposed to come out right when the pandemic hit. So it kind of bookends this, uh, this, this, you know, my, at least my absence from the theaters. I know some of you are already back. Um, but this was when I, I felt ready to go. Now, uh, of course, the story is also a bit more relatable. It made me a little bit nervous, actually, sometimes during the movie because, you know, it's, it's a similar situation because we're going through, we're still going through, I think that's important to remember when you look at the global situation, we're still going through a very real version of a global catastrophe. So what was it like being back? Well, my, as I said, my family rented out a movie theater the week before uh, to see Wrath of Man. I said, I'm back to seeing movies twice. I see them for work, and then I go and see them with family or friends again. I love doing that. It's so fun. I'm really tempted to go back and see A Quiet Place, too. I really had a good time. But so I saw Wrath of Man again, and it was so fun to have a full theater to ourselves and take off our masks and eat snacks, which we felt comfortable doing because we rented out the whole theater. Uh, a lot of people have been doing that. I hear from people who uh, people I know in the movie theater business that it's very popular, uh, and they might even continue doing it. In fact, it's so popular. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. It was really, really good. But I'm mentioning it here because they played, they played movie trailers in front of that. You know, even though it was just my family, you get the whole package. So they played movie trailers, and I saw them for the first time on the big screen. F9, Cruella, and they looked really good. I was like, wow, Cruella looks good on a big screen. I was really impressed. So when Paramount said that there would be no screeners for A Quiet Place 2 because it's theaters only, and that they were going to take every precaution possible to keep critics safe, uh, and it was going to be in a Dolby theater, I love those, I said, okay, let's do it. Now, to be honest, I have to be totally honest with you, while Paramount went above and beyond, you couldn't even have snacks because they wanted those masks to stay on, there were two very inconsiderate people who didn't keep their masks on, feeling that nobody could see them once the lights went down. But thankfully, security asked them to put their masks back on, uh, and they had to do one person twice because this guy just for some reason felt the rules didn't apply to him. It was very annoying. Also, I went double masked just to be safe, and I'm, I'm also vaccinated. But even with all that going on, I still had a really great time. I had a great time. I told someone that very evening that I saw A Quiet Place 2 in a Dolby theater, of course, known for its sound. It's Picture 2, but Dolby, of course, is a famous uh, sound company. Uh, and they were like, isn't that a silent movie? Which was hilarious. But A Quiet Place 2, in reality, has a solid amount of dialogue, actually. Don't worry, they're not cheating. They have clever reasons for why they do. Great sound design, really good sound design, a particularly noticeable in the Dolby, and a fantastic heart-pounding score. Like when the credits came on at the end and they're like, doom, 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 doom. I was like, I love being back in a theater. I'm having such a good time. Everyone in my theater was totally silent, but that of course was helped by masks, no snacks, and that you couldn't bring a guest. So the movie also, just itself, looked great up on the big screen. It was really, really thrilling. So let's talk about the movie, no spoilers. John Krasinski, he's super talented. That was after I was all excited about the score at the end of the movie and being like, I'm having a great time. I was like, that Krasinski, like it comes up and it's like directed and written by John Krasinski. And you're like, he did a great job. I mean, he directs here again as he did last time, but this time he wrote the script all by himself. Oh, we're going to talk about the script. He did a fantastic job. But right now I want to talk about his acting. So he appears briefly in the movie in a, well, kind of, he's, Krasinski is sprinkled throughout this review because this is very much his movie. Uh, he appears briefly in a flashback at the beginning to the day this all started, which is so well done. In fact, I wish the flashback had been longer. It could have even been its own movie. It was very Spielbergian, and I was impressed. I was like, Krasinski, you're good, you. You're good. Krasinski, of course, was iconic on The Office, but it seemed for a very long time that his movie career just wasn't going to work out. It seemed that way for, like, a really excruciating long time. Uh, 
It really didn't look like it was going to happen. But he took matters into his own hands. Good for him. And here, just like the first movie, he really comes across as a movie star. He would have been a good Captain America, actually. A very different one, for sure, than Chris Evans ended up being. But I do hope that he finds that big franchise role someday. He would be a fantastic Mr. Fantastic. Uh, but I hear Marvel doesn't want big names for the Fantastic Four movie. And I also suspect they're going to go younger. Which is a shame, because Emily Blunt is great here, too. She's fantastic. Like her husband, they're both fantastic. Uh, that'll be a lot of... We'll have, we'll be in pun or, or, you know, I guess it's not really a pun, but we'll have fun with Fantastic Four. But anyway, <clears throat> like her husband, she's a very versatile actress. And once again, she does a great job in an action role. I know she said she hates superhero movies, but I feel that she's just trying to throw everybody off the scent because who would say such a blanket aggressive statement against like the most popular genre there is right now? It makes no sense unless that's what, I, Emily Blunt's not that dumb. She's not, she's not Martin Scorsese. All right, so anyway, however, her role is also smaller in this film, like Krasinski's, and the movie shifts focus to Millicent Simmons, Noah Jupe, and Cillian Murphy, who does a great job taking over for Krasinski as the male lead, but in a very different way. He's great. He's always great. But, you know, he's all, he went like, well, I don't want to give anything away about his role, but he was really good here. Uh, it was a different, it was a different side to Murphy that I don't feel I'd ever, I'd ever seen before. Simmons, again, who is deaf in real life, you know, uh, that was uh, uh, one of the things that was, um, that they talked about very much when they were promoting the first movie. Uh, but she's more than just stunt casting, which is why I bring it up. She's a very good actress and she does a great job with her action scenes as well. Scoot McNary, almost unrecognizable, but I spotted him. I like Scoot McNary a lot. I was like, is that Scoot McNary? What? Uh, and uh, Jaman uh, Hansu are also great, as always. They're both very talented actors, but they're in very small roles. This sequel noticeably tries to diversify its cast, which is commendable, particularly in the flashback sequence. But it still doesn't give even a solid supporting role, a supporting role, even a solid supporting role to an actor of color. Uh, and we'll see how that affects its box office. The first movie did great, but I think that because it was such a limited story, it, you know, it was understandable the way it was cast. But as they expand the world of the film, as they do here, I feel that they, I would have written in a bigger role for an actor of color. From, I think, not only from a business perspective, but from a, it's right and you should represent your audience perspective. That's how I feel about it. I know some of you don't agree with me, but you're wrong. All right, to me, the best thing about the movie is by far Krasinski's writing and directing. It's, you know, the film, it's really good. The film does have a Spielbergian quality, not only to the opening, but I feel to some degree throughout. It's very Jaws, and I love Jaws. Jaws is so good. This movie is very clever, both with the scenarios it creates for how people survive in this silent world, so clever, and also how they keep getting in trouble so we can have an exciting movie. And the ending, oh, the ending. That, the ending really resonated with me. I was like, I did not see that coming. And I thought that the John Krasinski dreamed that up was really, really impressive. Very well done, it resonates dramatically that's what's so cool about it it's a cool dramatic moment i was and i it was and it was wordless and i totally got what he was trying to say there are plans to make a quiet place three and before i saw this movie i thought that was ridiculous and a bit of an overreach i was like whoa i don't think we can have a third silent movie but now that i've seen a quiet place two i'm like let's go i believe krasinski can do it he's not going to direct it uh, he's passing the reins to the guy who directed Mud, which I think is actually a pretty, gr a pretty great choice. Uh, I hope that he's still very much involved in it creatively in shaping the story, though. Uh, a Quiet Place 2 is just as good as the first film, and I would say perhaps even better, because again, as I said, the world of the film is rapidly expanding. I had a great time seeing it. I really did. And it's so awesome to see movies, complete with the in-theater experience, come roaring back to life and show that they can hold their own against the streaming experience. We were worried about it, but I think movies Memorial Day weekend are going to make an awfully strong case. Oh, it's exciting. Now, I want to point out that if you still don't feel comfortable going to the theater, this movie will be available exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. I believe it's an exclusive. Why else, what would be the point if it wasn't? But 45 days later. They're going, this is, and you're going to see what the 45-day window feels like. Uh, also, you might try going to a matinee, right? Or during the week when it will be less crowded. Uh, 
I mean, also if you're vaccinated like me, if you wear a double mask and you make sure that nobody's sitting too close to you, you might feel comfortable like I did. But it's a personal choice and no one should go back before they're ready. Uh, you know, make a plan, make a plan, be smart about it. Like like uh, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski's characters in this movie. Uh, and, and, and make sure that's why I had the double mask because sometimes sometimes things don't go to plan. That's why I wore. That's why I went with the double mask. I know some of you are like, "You're vaccinated. Why are you wearing a double mask?" I'm like, "You can never be too safe," uh, and that way I was able to go. So share your thoughts and your experiences down below and your plans if you're going to go and see either of these movies Memorial Day weekend. Subscribe today. And of course, because, you know, you might give somebody else an idea of how they might be able to go to the theater. You know, I think that's very helpful. So let's uh, let's brainstorm down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.